Over the last 10 years, computers have become immensely more usable. The visual experience has gotten better. The audio has gotten better. Unfortunately, over this period of time, computers have done little to involve a user's sense of touch. This creates a divide and immersion between the user and the computer. My team and I decided to create a device that would bridge this gap, finally allowing people to feel the virtual world. We call this device Force Field. Before I explain how the device works, though, I want to acknowledge my teammates, David Baker, Systems Engineering, Tyler Karen, Mechanical Engineering, and Preston Morris, Mechanical Engineering. Force Field is first and foremost a mouse. There is a knob slash end effector, which is magnetically attached to a metal plane. This knob is the equivalent of your cursor, while the plane is the equivalent of your screen. There are also four wires attached to the knob. As you move the knob around, the length of these wires change. This determines your position on the plane. The force field is not simply an input device, however. The same wires which determine the knob's position are also capable of pulling the knob around. We can put varying forces on the wires via motors. These variable forces combine into a resultant force, which lets us control the knob and impose forces on it. We had three design goals in mind when we started creating force field. Speed, strength, and accuracy. Speed means that the device operates quickly enough that users do not feel latency when they move the end effector. Strength means the device can pull against you with enough force to be meaningful. Accuracy means the device is sensitive enough to be used as a high-end computer mouse. With these design goals in mind, I'm going to explain how our device works. This system block diagram will be the roadmap. We start with the end effector slash knob. This is how the user interfaces with the device. This has four wires attached to it. These four wires run out to caster pulleys which are positioned in the corners of the device. These allow the wires to be smoothly directed to underneath the device. You can see a video of them in action here. Underneath the device, the wires are connected to spindles where they can wind up. These spindles are connected via shaft collars to motors and encoders. An encoder is a piece of electronics which measures rotary motion. We use these encoders to measure the change in length of the wires. These four encoder values are read in by a teensy microcontroller. These encoders' values are equivalent to the length of the wires. This teensy microcontroller then sends these values via USB to a device driver written in C++. The device driver then calculates the XY position of the end effector using these lengths. The position of the mouse cursor is then set based on this XY position. An application then decides which force vector it wants to send to the device. It sends the X and Y components of the desired force to the device driver using an open source messaging library called ZNQ. The device driver receives this force and then uses an iterative linear programming library called LPSolve to determine the torques for each motor required to create the desired force. These torque values are then sent back to the microcontroller. Finally, the microcontroller reads in the torques and sends the appropriate values to our current amplifiers, which power our motors. Now that you know how the device works, I would like to share a handful of applications that play to the strengths of our device. The first application of our device is in the medical world. Our device is perfect for fine motor skill rehabilitation. Fine motor skill rehabilitation is required after a person has a stroke or damage to their hands or arms. One of our demo applications exhibits this. The user is instructed to move the mouse to a specific position on the screen. As they are moving the device, disturbing forces are generated and sent to the driver to challenge the patient to stabilize their hand. Another application of our device is education. Above you can see a demo we created. The blue dots are positive charges, while the red dots are negative charges. 
The electrical field from these charges is represented by the black arrows. As the user moves their cursor through the electric field, they feel the force that a positive test charge would feel. This demo shows how the device can help users get an intuitive sense of physical and mathematical concepts, Coulomb's law in this case. Here is a video of the application running. A final application of our device is gaming and virtual reality. We can see this device providing an immense amount of immersion in a video game situation. In fact, one of our demos was a clone of Angry Birds called Irate Avians. The player could feel the tension of the slingshot as they pulled back. Similar to gaming is virtual reality. Lately, we've seen huge strides in immersive VR, especially with Oculus Rift. I think the next step will be adding tactile feedback to virtual worlds. Our device is a step in that direction. Above, you can see a demo we created where a user is able to interact with a rigid ball. Now that you have a good understanding of our device and its uses, I would like to share our results with you. We achieved a haptic loop frequency of 25 to 50 hertz. This represents how often that the entire loop operates from reading input to outputting correct forces. We also achieved a maximum isotropic force of 5 newtons. Then this means that anywhere on the plane, you can achieve a force of magnitude 5 newtons in any direction. Finally, we achieved an input resolution of 207 dpi. We are very happy with these results, as they allow for a very satisfying user experience. Thanks for watching this presentation. I'd like to give special thanks to Heather Colbertson, Parth, Professor Kuchenbecker, Sid, and Professor Laker. Also, I would like to thank our sponsors below.